We are working through the quotient rule, and we've done quite a few examples so far. We have one major example to go through, and that is an applied example. So how can we see something like this happen in a real-life setting? The example that I have is Linda, a biologist, studied the effects of a toxin on a bacterial culture, determines that T hours after the toxin has been introduced, the population of bacteria in the culture is P million, where it's given by this function here. P of T is equal to T plus 1 all over T squared plus T plus 4. With this, we want to know in part A, at what rate is the population of the culture changing with respect to time when Linda introduces the toxin, meaning when T is equal to zero, and is the population, is the bacteria increasing or decreasing at that time? In part B, we want to know when the population peaks and when it begins to decline meaning what time does that occur and what is the population at that time. And part C, what is going to happen to the rate of the population growth in the long run. I have equipped you with all of the material to handle all three of these parts of the problem on your own. So pause the video and see what answer you can come up with. Okay, let us start with, naturally, part A. So part A asks, at what rate is the population? And I'm not even going to read the rest of the question there because we know when we see that word rate, that really means that we are looking for the slope or the derivative. So we know that we have to take the derivative in this step here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we need to compute P prime of T. We see that we have a quotient in our original function or a fraction. So obviously we're going to have to do the quotient rule. We know the rule is low D high minus high D low. So low or the bottom, D high, meaning the derivative of the high, minus high, the original of the top, D low, the derivative of the bottom, and that is all over the bottom squared. So now I need to simplify this. So in the first part here, if I just multiply it all by 1, that gives the exact same thing that we have. Minus, in the back part here, we have to FOIL it. T times 2T gives me 2T squared. Outside of t and inside of 2t gives me a 3t, and last gives me a plus 1. Then we know that we are subtracting all of that, which means we have to distribute this negative. So let me change this to a plus, and let me distribute my negative all the way through. And that is all over the original of the bottom squared. Now we can multiply out this bottom, but we know that the factored format is always the best. So now in the numerator, we just need to combine like terms. We have t squared minus 2t squared gives me a negative t squared. Then t minus 3t gives me a negative 2t. And last, 4 minus 1 gives me a plus 3. And that is all over the denominator. Copy it down from step to step. So if we want to know the rate, then we're going to use this equation here. So now I can go back and I can continue to read what this is actually asking. At what rate is the population of the culture changing with respect to time when Linda introduces the toxin, meaning at the very beginning stages, at the very first step? And if that doesn't tell you what to do, it gives you an extremely strong hint here, and that is at our initial time when t is equal to zero. So we need to figure out what P prime of zero is. Well, since we have what P prime of T is, we're just going to plug zero in for our equation. So we have negative zero squared minus two times zero plus three all over zero squared plus zero plus four quantity squared. 
And this is nice because all of these zero things cancel out, so that's going to make the simplification extremely easy. On the top, we have positive 3. On the bottom, we have 4 squared, which simplifies to be 16. Since this is an applied problem, it's probably best to go ahead and figure out what the decimal approximation of that is, and that is 0.1875. So the rate at our initial time, or when the bacteria is introduced, is given by this number here. But we have to know what that really means, meaning what's our label. So this is a rate, so our label has to be something per something. It's always our function per our variable. So in this case, our function is given by the population in millions. So this is million bacteria. And then the per is always our variable. So in this case, T stands for time, and time is in hours. So our rate at the initial time frame is 0.1875 million bacteria per hour. But we know that we can rewrite that in a little bit format that makes a little bit more sense. Instead of me saying 0.1875 million, let me rewrite that, or let me multiply these two numbers. Million has six zeros in it, so I just need to move my decimal place over six times. So that gives me 187500, or 187,500, and again, my label is still population or bacteria per hour. So that's the answer to our first question. The second question then asks, is, is the population increasing or decreasing at that time? So is it growing or is it declining? That all depends upon what the sign of our answer was just was. And we came up with a positive answer here. So since that is positive, that means that our bacteria population is increasing at this time. It's getting larger. And so that is the answer that we have in part A. Of course, I always like to double check everything. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's look at what the calculator tells us. So I have my original equation plugged in. Again, I used x's instead of t's, but it means the same thing. x plus 1 over x squared plus x plus 4. Let's go ahead and graph this on the normal window. So I'm going to do zoom 6, or z standard. And I see this graph here. It's not the best picture of the graph, so um, I can see that I have a lot of dead space in my y range. So let me go ahead and kind of zoom in on my y values. Let me make them quite a bit smaller. So my y min, let's just go ahead and go to negative 1. And my y max, let's go to 1. My scale, I'm going to go by 0.1 or tenths of a unit. So I see a much better visual of this graph. And in fact, it looks like I could have made my y values even smaller because I still have a lot of dead space here. But nonetheless, at this point, I'm looking for my rate at my initial time frame, or when t is equal to 0. I do second trace to get to my calculate feature. I'm looking for rate, so I'm going to use option 6. And I'm looking for my rate at 0, so I hit 0 and then enter. And it tells us here that our dy dx is equal to 0.18749998. Or if I were to round that to four decimal places, 0.1875. And so that is the answer that we got. We just adjusted it for our label of millions bacteria. Okay, so let me move on to part B. In part B, it tells us that Linda is especially interested in knowing when the population peaks out and when it begins to decline. At what time does this occur and how much does the population increase before it starts to decrease? Now, we're going to do this algebraically here, of course, because that's the precise way to do it. But since we just referenced the visual, let's go ahead and reference it again here. So we want to know when our population of our bacteria peaks out, meaning when does it reach the absolute highest point? 
And we can see that really easy on the visual here on our graph. We can see that our high point is going to be somewhere around in here. Now, if we want to figure out what this is, we can do it algebraically first and then double check it with our graphing calculator. Or we can get an idea of the number that we're looking for by using the graphing calculator first. Normally, I suggest it the other way, but since we are already looking at this visual, let's go ahead and do it this way. If we want the peak out, that means we want the maximum on this problem. So let's use our maximum feature. That is underneath calculate. So I do second, trace. Option number four is maximum. So maximum tells us go left of the maximum first. So anywhere that you're considered left of the maximum is good. So I hit enter. Then it says right bound. So I'm going to go somewhere right of my maximum and hit enter. So my maximum is going to be between these two dotted lines or between these two arrows. It asks us to guess where we think the maximum is. So go to where you think the point is. And it's somewhere up here. So I'm going to hit enter right there. And so I get these values here. So I'm going to guess my maximum is when my x value, or in my problem, when my t value equals 1, and when my y value, or when my p of t is equal to 0.3 repeating, or 1 third. So if my calculator tells me the right answer, my maximum is going to be when my t value is equal to 1, and when my p of t value is equal to 0.3 repeating, well, I know that that's the decimal approximation for one-third. So I know what answer I should be looking for. I'm going to stop this video here, but in the next video, I'm going to come back right where I left off, and I'm going to work through this a problem officially to get to this answer that I'm specifically looking for.